Alright guys, let's see here. I have the cloth that we're going to be using laid out. As you guys can see, it's folded in half and laid out. So, one thing to remember, especially with this cloth, that's got the square, tiny little squares on it, the pattern, is in order to cut this one, I can't simply rely on this being a straight edge or on this being a straight edge. Um, first and foremost, I'm not sure if you guys can tell, probably not, uh, but this is by no means <laughs> a straight edge. Neither is this one. So because of the pattern, I am going to base my straight edge on what I know to be the straightest edge on my canvas, let's say, which is the lines in, in it, the lines within it. So this piece here is one that I had already cut um, and I'm just using that to help myself, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do the measurement. You want to put your notebook kind of in the middle here and you pick the, uh, the, the amount that you want on all sides. This will be cut later. It's always better to have too much than not enough. Uh, if you have too much, the same with carpentry. If you have too much, you can always make another cut and fix it. But if you have too little, then you kind of have to start all over again. So we're gonna leave about an inch and a half there and on all sides. So we're gonna set that there. Now with this one that I had already cut previously, I'm just using it to give me kind of an idea. So we already know that it's gonna be right there because we're gonna leave equal amounts here and here. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna remove the notebook. I am right-handed, so I want the ruler on the inside. That way I can hold it with my left and make my cut with my right hand. So very carefully placing the ruler here. And I'm going to, like I said, follow these lines within my canvas, as we decided to call it. <laughs> so we're gonna put this exactly where we want it. And it's right there. I'm gonna remove this one out of the way. And like I said before, guys, these things are very, very sharp. Um, and this is the one we're gonna use. So very carefully, taking into consideration that my fingers are far inside the ruler. We don't, we don't want a finger sticking halfway out. I like my fingers as they are. And the way to use these, the easiest way, is we're gonna stand up and stand essentially right over it. You're gonna wanna push down and make sure with this hand you're holding it very, very steady. You don't want the ruler to move on you. So we're gonna hold this straight down and we are going to make our cut slow and steady, making sure we don't get fingers along the way. And if that went according to plan, Haha, it did. All right, so now we can go ahead and put this aside. No better feeling in the world than that's that straight cut without the ruler moving. Oh, I just hate when that happens. Whenever you're trying to make a cut and something happens or you're thinking about something else and you start your cut here and the ruler moves and you end up making a cut like that. Oh, I just, I hate that. Anyway. Don't let me get on my soapbox there, all right? <laughs> so now we have two equal parts. Now, and I'm gonna use quilting as an example for this. In quilting, you would want everything to be straight because you're making a quilt, right? In book binding, especially this type of book binding where we're gonna be pasting this onto that paper and later on onto the cardboard, um, you don't need everything to be exactly straight and reason being of course I haven't cut my my cardboard yet so we're gonna use the smaller piece as a reference point but the reason is the 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 cardboard is gonna be essentially this size it's gonna be about an eighth of an inch bigger on these three sides so whenever it comes to putting it on we can as you guys can see, we have extra on all sides. So we can move the notebook wherever we need it to in order for the lines on the, the, our canvas here 
to be exactly level and aligned with everything. So now we have that cut. Let's move on to the next step. So the next step, guys, once we have this cut, is gonna be to glue it to that paper. This here's the paper. And a quick parenthesis that I wanted to discuss with you guys, when it comes to book binding, or essentially any hobby, you're gonna come up with your own tools that work the best for you, that aren't necessarily book binding tools, or tools that directly apply to whatever hobby you have. In order to apply the glue, this is how we're gonna do it. We have the glue, I'm going to be using a plate, any plate works just fine. What this here is, is a roller. If you guys go to your local home improvement store, they're gonna have a little um, paint bin, if you will, that comes with a little roller like this. Um, that little paint bin is, of course, about this wide and about that long, and it's actually perfect size for what we're doing today. My friend does not have the bin, so that's why we're gonna be using the plate. But we are gonna be using the roller that came with it. And the way this is gonna work is we're gonna pour a good amount, not too much, but a good amount of the glue onto the plate. And then we're just gonna very slowly apply that glue onto the roller and go from there. So for the paper, and like I said before, this paper is about as thick as two or three sheets of paper. Um, it's not specific paper, but you definitely want a large enough sheet. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna be pouring the glue onto the plate, very slowly getting the glue onto our roller, and then we are going to apply the glue to the entire surface of the paper. Of course, you probably want to have pre-measured the paper so that you don't have too much and pardon the train. Ah, there's another video for me. The house where I am staying uh, is about 15 paces between the front door and the train tracks. So I may, I may do a little video of that. It's a very old school train here in Costa Rica and it's really pretty cool. So I may, I may incorporate that into a video and, and you guys may hear the train every now and again throughout the making of this video. Of course, this is part one. Uh, which I will have to divide this video into multiple parts. So stay tuned for that. So as you guys can see here, we have a good size of piece of paper and we have our cloth with good amounts of paper on all sides. And that's what you want. You want extra paper. Like we discussed earlier, it's, it's better to have too much than not enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the glue set up and get the glue ready onto my plate and then we will come back and apply the glue. Okay, so for the next step, we have our ledger paper, finally remembered what it was called, ledger paper, cut slightly larger in size than the piece of fabric we're gonna be using. Now, as you guys can see, I have put my working mat aside, made sure that the, cl that the table was clean and that there was absolutely no sand or sugar or particles of anything underneath this paper and I put it stuck it to the table with four pieces of tape now what we're gonna do this is kind of a tool of the trade in order to make things easier for us is we're gonna lay this out and we're gonna grab a ruler one of our longer rulers and we are going to wrap the fabric in order to make it easier to glue. So as you guys can see, we're gonna grab the fabric and we're gonna hold it. Grab a piece of tape here and we are going to stick it to the ruler. And I personally like to do this on in two places. That way everything's a little tighter. And then we're gonna make it relatively tight and we're going to start bending it back and simply rolling it over the ruler and this will make perfect sense as soon as we start sticking it together by doing this we can put glue all over the paper and only glue a small piece of fabric at a time 
That way, in the event of any, let's call it snafu, we only have glue on a small part of the fabric. So now we're going to put that aside. And here we have the roller with the glue already on it. And the way we are going to do this is while holding the paper, because tape is only a little bit of good, um, we're going to make sure we don't have anything on the paper either. And we're going to apply the glue from the middle out. And we want the entire surface of the paper to be covered in glue. And as you guys can see, we're going to get a little bit of the glue on the table because we do want the entire piece of paper to be covered. And then to do this back part, we want to hold it up here. We don't want the paper to get loose on us. And we do want it all to be covered. Now, if you find it necessary, then go side to side. Now, whenever you begin to go side to side, you're gonna have to go real slow because as you guys can see, the tape is only good for a small period of time. So now that we have the entire surface covered, we're gonna make sure that our fingers are clean of that dry glue. And we're going to remove at least the bottom two pieces of tape. And we remove those so that we can grab the paper, make sure it's flat. There we go. And now we're going to begin applying the fabric. We are going to leave about two fingers at the bottom. and then begin slowly unrolling the fabric. Now, before we unroll the fabric, we want to make sure it's stretched and glued consistently. As you guys can see, I'm not using my entire hands. I don't wanna get glue on my hands and then come back over the fabric with sticky fingers, which that ties in with what we talked about earlier of wanting the glue to dry clear. If you make the fabric tighter on one side than the other side on the ruler, then your lines are not going to be straight at all. We're going to carefully remove the tape and set the tape aside. And what I like to do on this piece is with the ruler, finish it there by pushing the ruler slightly. And then we come back over it with our fingers. And now, we are going to use this tool right here. You can also use any credit card, expired or otherwise, and go from the middle out. Okay. Now, we're going to remove the last two remaining pieces of tape. And one thing that I did not tell you guys you may need is about to appear here on the screen before me. Now, the way we do it is we use a piece of wood as the piece of wood appears before me. Haha, <laughs> magic. YouTube magic. And we're going to place this face down onto the piece of wood. We're gonna use our hands first 
to make sure it sticks. This is why we glued the entire sheet of paper so that it sticks to this piece of wood. As you guys can see, we've used it quite a bit. And what this is is simply a moist rag. And we're gonna start from the middle, work our way out. Now, as, as I mentioned, the rag is moist, so make sure you use a very conservative amount of pressure. And as you guys can see, you can somewhat see the pattern of the fabric as the paper gets wet. So you want to do this very carefully and consistently. If the paper rips, well, you're gonna have to start over. So do it very carefully. And then once you're confident that the center has all the bubbles out, I like to come back over the edge, again, with little pressure. You do not want to rip the paper on all four corners and all four sides. And we are going to leave this here for it to dry. Now let me get this out of the way. And as you guys can see, there's glue left on the table. We want to make sure we clean that glue. This glue tends to begin the drying process pretty quick. So don't leave glue on your table for too long. 